let's talk about what a literal equation is. A literal equation is an equation that has several variables, okay? So you see these in science all the time. Like when you get into chemistry and into um, physics, you'll see a ton of literal equations. Um, one of the literal equations that we use in here in some of the later sections is like distance. Distance equals rate times time. There's actually no numbers in that equation, but you have a variable for distance, you have a variable for rate, you have a variable for time. And so very often you will be solving for the same variable all the time, and you will want it to be equal to that variable so that you don't have to plug it in and then solve, plug it in and then solve, plug it in and then solve. And so what's easier to do at the beginning of this process is to just solve it for one variable. And that way, all you're doing is plugging in and doing order of operations. And so literal equations, they give you an example here of um, Ohm's law, which is, has to do with electrical. And you'll see that we have just all variables. So what we're going to do in this section is they're going to give you one of these literal equations and they're going to say, okay, I want you to solve for this variable. And you're going to do all the processes that you would have done with numbers, adding, a num adding, a adding over, subtracting over, multiplying or dividing over, but you're not going to actually have the numbers. So they will just stay variables. So let's look at the first example here. They've given us this equation, F equals WH over L. And they want us to solve specifically for the variable H. So our goal is to get H completely by itself. So we are going to look at everything with the H and say, well, how do we get rid of it? Now remember, this was actually one, of, one type on your quiz, I believe, on your test. When you have something like this, remember the top is grouped. So you wanna get rid of the bottom first. Well, what is happening between the top and the bottom? What operation is that? Between WH and the L, what does that line represent? Division. division. And so if that represents division and I'm trying to get rid of it, what do I need to do? Multiply. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by this L. When I do that, on the right-hand side, these cancel out to ones. So on the right-hand side, I have just the W and the H. And on the left-hand side, I have the F times the L. I'm trying to get the H by itself. So then I'm gonna look over here and say, well, what is happening between the W and the H? What operation is happening between the W and the H? Multiplication. So if I wanna get rid of that W, what do I need to do? Divide. And so I'm gonna divide by W. And so on the left-hand side, my W's cancel out to one. H equals F times L divided by W. That is my answer. Why would I do this? Well, if I have some type of chemical equation and I'm always solving for H, in the first one, I would have to plug everything in except the H, then I'd have to multiply and then divide and then multiply and then divide over and you have more room for error. When you set it up equal to your variable, then you can just plug everything in and just do order of operations. They've given us P equals 2L plus 2W. What equation is that? That is perimeter for a rectangle, right? Perimeter for a rectangle. They want us to now solve it for L. So instead of having P by itself, they want L by itself. So we're gonna take this equation and we are going to solve it so that the L is by itself. So my first step is to get rid of everything that doesn't have an L in it. So if you look over here, we're trying to get this by itself. So my first step is to get rid of this. It's plus 2w. How do I move it to the other side? What do I do to move it to the other side? Yeah, I'm going to subtract. To move it to the other side, you just do the opposite. So on the right-hand side, I just have the 2l. On the left-hand side, I have p minus 2w. Can I combine those? Are they like terms? No, no they're different variables, right? And since they're different variables, I cannot combine them. I'm actually just going to leave it just like that. I'm going to leave it just like that. Okay. My L is still not by itself, right? What's happening between the 2 and the L? That's multiplication. So since that's multiplication, what do I do to get rid of it? Divide. Now, when I divide this left-hand side, you need to draw that line underneath all of it. It is dividing everything by 2. 
Okay, so draw that line underneath all of it. On the right-hand side, the twos cancel out to a 1L. And on the left-hand side, I'm just going to leave it like that. P minus 2W over 2. So this is my literal equation solved for L. All right, that's my literal equation solved for L. They have a second half here. Then they want me to find L, and they give me these to plug it in. All right, they want me to plug in those. So I'm going to take this new equation. I'm going to plug in a 58 for P and a 6 for W. So I have 58 minus 2 times 6 divided by 2. That is going to be my L. So now I just do order of operations. Remember, the numerator is grouped. Even if you don't see grouping, that's grouped. So I'm going to do everything in the numerator first. 2 times 6, what is that? 12. 12. So I have 58 minus 12 in the numerator over 2. What is 58 minus 12? 46. 46. So I have 46 divided by 2, which gives me 23. So my L is 23 when my perimeter is 58 and my width is 6. All right, so let's check your answers. For the first one, you should have gotten Q, X equals N times Q. For the second one, X equals B minus D, or you could have negative D plus B. I'll show you both ways. And then for the last one, you should have gotten R equals C divided by 2 pi. So let's look at the first one together. We have X over N equals Q. They want us to get X by itself. What is happening between the X and the N? What's happening here? Division. So what is my inverse operation? So I need to multiply both sides by N. They put it in um, alphabetical order, which is what you're typically going to see with these. So that's why they have X equals N times Q. All right. For the next one, there were two different ways to do this one. So you have B minus X equals D. You could have chosen to subtract. This is a positive B, so we need to subtract the B. You have a negative X equals D minus B. You do not have the X by itself. You still have a negative 1 there. So divide everything by negative 1, which ends up having negative X divided by negative 1 is positive X. D divided by negative 1 is negative D. Negative B divided by negative 1 is positive B. That's one way you could do it. The other way, you have B minus X equals D. You could have added the X over. This would leave just B on this side and D plus X on that side. And then you could have subtracted the D. When you do that, you end up with B minus D equals x. You'll notice in both of these, the d is negative, right? d is negative. The b is positive. These two are the same thing. Negative d plus b or b minus d are the same answer. Both of those work. For this last one, they want us to solve for the r. So we have c equals 2 pi r. What's happening between all three of those over here on this side? 2 and pi and r. It's multiplication. So you can actually go ahead and divide everything by that 2 pi and divide at the same time when it's all multiplication. So you end up with C over 2 pi equals R. Example 3 on page 95. So this one has AX minus 5B equals 7X plus 18B, and they want us to solve 4X. All right, they want us to solve 4X. Now, here is the thing with when you have multiple variables of the same variable. So I have X's here and I have B's. What I need to do here is I need to get all of my X's on one side of this and all of my B's on the other side of it. So I have AX minus 5B equals 7X plus 18B. All right? So my goal here is to get um, X's on one side B's on the other. It doesn't matter which side, it, you're going to get the same answer. 
So I'm gonna move my x's to the left side. So if I do that, I'm gonna subtract x over here, all right? And then I want, to, if I do my x's on the left side, so it canceled out on the right, then I need to move my b's over to the right side. Okay, it's gonna cancel here. And so what I have here, ax and 7x, I can't really combine those right now. So I'm just gonna say ax minus 7x. Okay. On the right hand side, I have 18B and 5B. How many Bs do I have? 23. Okay. Now let's think about distribution. All right. What does distribution say? Distribution says, well, if I have something like this, then I can do this A, B plus 7 times A. All right. Distribution actually works both ways, both directions. I can distribute into a parentheses or I can distribute out of a parentheses, all right? Which means if I have the same thing multiplying by something, I can actually take it out and put parentheses around it, all right? That's how we even add this stuff. So right here, I have an X multiplying both of these. Everybody see that? The X is multiplying to the A, the X is multiplying to the negative seven, right? So distribution says that is the same thing as having the x on the outside. So if I put the x on the outside, I have just the a minus 7 in here. And you can check it. Do they equal the same thing? Well, if I were to distribute x times a, that's ax, x times 7, that's negative 7x. Yep, that is the same thing. And so distribution works both directions. So when you have a literal equation like this and you have two of your variables there, but one you cannot combine because of that variable in front, you can use distribution and pull it out. And so that's what we've done here. We've used distribution and we've pulled it out. All right, so now on the left-hand side, I have x times that parentheses equals 23b. So it looks like this, x times a minus seven equals 23b. So now I'm gonna say, what is happening between the x and this group? What's going on? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. What's happening between the x and this group? It's multiplication. I just did distribution to do that in the first place. So I can actually divide by the entire group. I can divide by the entire group here. And the entire group will cancel out. And I'll have just x and I'll have 23b a minus seven on bottom. So this is what you're gonna do when you have multiple variables going on and you're trying to get the variable by itself. You're gonna to have to use distribution to pull it out, which is technically what you're doing when you're adding these guys. This is technically saying, well, b times 18 plus b times five. Well, that's just b times 18 plus five, b times 23. I mean, that's why we can add like terms, okay? And so we're saying the same thing. We're saying, well, I can just take the x out and I'm left with just the a minus seven. And now I can divide by that a minus seven to get the x all by itself. All right, so solving literal equations. Um, if you need to use the distributive property, you can um, use that just like we did. If you have fractions, you can multiply everything by the common denominator. Um, if you can simplify, you need to simplify the equation. You're collecting all the terms of one variable on one side and all the terms without that variable on the other. You may need to use distribution to isolate your variable. And then you're gonna end up at the very end dividing to get everything by itself, typically. Look at this next one, all right? So for something like this, I have um, two different denominators per se. Even though they are all variables, they're still denominators. And what they want me to do is they want me to get the A by itself. Now the A is on both sides of the equation and he's kind of trapped because remember in the numerator, even though you don't see it, you actually have grouping. So this is grouped and this is grouped which means I cannot add the a over, I cannot subtract the 2b over, I can't subtract the a over, 
I can't move any of anything in that group as long as it's still in a group, okay? So what I need to do first is I need to get rid of my denominators. You get rid of your denominators by multiplying. This is an equation. So this is where I'm going to multiply everything by my common denominator. You're going to have to think of this in terms of variables. Like if this was 2 and 3, how would you find your common denominator? You would multiply 2 times 3. Your denominators here are B and C. So what is your common denominator? Well, B and C don't have anything in common. You just multiply them. So you do look for it technically a least common denominator here, but it is B times C. All right? If this were 2 times 3, it would be 6, but it's variables. So we just say B times C. So I am going to multiply both sides of this equation times B, C. That is my common denominator. You are going to use the same process here. You're going to cancel. What can I cancel here between the B, C, and the C? Yeah, I can cancel the C, right? So I can take this out, and I just have B times this guy right here. So what can I cancel on the other side? Right, I can cancel the B. And I just have C times this side right here. All right? Now I still have a grouping issue. My A's are still inside my group. So, still inside my group, how do I get rid of my parentheses? What's the process that I do to get rid of my parentheses? Distribution. And so I'm going to distribute through B times A. Well, I'm just going to write that AB. This guy right here, what happens when I multiply b times 2b? Remember my properties of exponents. I multiply a b times a b. What is it? B squared. Remember, you add your exponents. So b times 2b is 2b squared. All right? Look at the right-hand side. I'm going to distribute this c through. c times cd. What happens there? There we go. And then C times A. All right? So you're just going to take it one step at a time. The thing about literal equations is you don't have to worry about messing up your numbers because there aren't any, right? So now my goal, now that I have gotten rid of all of my denominators and I've gotten rid of all of my parentheses, I need to get everything that has an A on one side of that equation and everything that doesn't have an A on the other side of the equation. So I am going to move this over. How do I move it over? Right, right now it's subtracting. So I need to just say plus AC, plus AC. It's gonna cancel over here. If I'm moving my A's over to the left, then I wanna move everything that doesn't have an A over to the right. So I'm gonna move this one over to the opposite side. What do I need to do there? Subtract. So it's gonna cancel over here. So then on the left-hand side, I have AB plus AC, all right? On the right-hand side, I have C squared D minus two B squared. All right, I'm trying to get which variable by itself? I'm trying to get A by itself. So on the left-hand side, I need to use my distribution rule. You'll notice A is multiplying to B and A is multiplying to C. My distribution works both directions. By distribution. So I'm going to, if they both have A in common, I can put A on the outside. And on the inside, I have just what's left over, B plus C. And you can see if you distributed that, you would get what you started with. You would say A times B, that's AB. A times C, that's AC. So I have it broken out. On the right-hand side, I don't need to worry about anything. Leave this completely alone because it doesn't have any A's in it. All right? What's happening between this and this group, between the A and the group? What's going on between those two? It's multiplication. So since it's multiplication, I can divide. On the left-hand side, it cancels. So on the left-hand side there, I now have my A all by itself. 
On the right hand side, I have what A equals. So don't let the fact that this is all variables throw you. It is, you are simply taking it one step at a time to simplify it and get what you want by itself. Normally you're getting X by itself and it's all numbers that you're dealing with. Now you're getting a variable by itself and it's just all variables. So you have to worry about, is it like terms? If it's not, leave it alone. You can't combine them, okay? If it has two of them, you need to use distribution to pull it out and then divide that group over. For the first one, we have fractions. So this is where we want to find the common denominator and multiply everything by it. So my denominators are three and eight. What is my common denominator between those? 24. It's 24. So I have F plus Y over three equals Y over eight. I'm gonna multiply every single piece of that by 24. Every single piece. When I do that, this just stays the same. Right here, 24 divided by 3, what happens here? This just becomes 8y. On the other side, 24 divided by 8, what happens here? That is 3y. All right? All right, so I need to get... I'm solving for which one? Which one am I solving for? I'm solving for F. If I'm solving for F, I need to move everything away from the F. So I have 24F plus 8Y equals 3Y. I need to move that 8Y over. Right now it is adding 8Y, adding 8Y. So I need to subtract my 8Y. All right. On the left-hand side, it cancels. I have just 24F. On the right-hand side, I have 3 minus 8. What is 3 minus 8? Negative 5Y. Five. Five All right, I still don't have F by itself. What's happening between the 24 and the F? Multiplication. Multiplication. So how do I get rid of it? Division. Division. So I'm going to cancel. One, it becomes 1F, which is what I'm trying to get by itself. And then this cannot reduce in any way. I am just gonna leave that alone. The five cannot reduce with the 24. I have a Y, it's just gonna stay there. Next one. For the next one, which variable am I solving for? Just Y. So in this case, I have X's, Y's, and I have a little A thrown in there as well. So. I want to get my y's to one side and anything that is not a y to the other. I'm going to move my a y over with subtraction. That will cancel on the left side. I'm going to move my 3x over with addition. That will cancel on the left side. So on the right side, I have 2y minus a y. I can't combine those. 2 and a cannot combine. On the right hand side, however, I have negative 2x and positive 3x. What do I have? Just 1x. All right. Here is where I'm going to use my distribution property. There is a y in both of those. y is multiplying to both of those, so he can be on the outside and multiply by what's left, 2 minus a. And then I can divide by the entire group. It's being multiplied right here, so I can divide by the entire group. It's gonna cancel on the left-hand side. I will be left with just y, which is what I'm solving for. And on the right-hand side, I will have x over two minus a. Boiling point of an ethanol solution rises as sugar is added according to the formula. So the boiling point of sugar um, equals the boiling point of ethanol uh, plus, and we have, according to the formula, we have K of ethanol and M. So mol molality is M. They want us to solve for that M, all right? And I'm not going to make you actually plug it all in, but let's just look at this guy right here. We have the boiling point of sugar. We have the boiling point of ethanol. 
All right, we have a constant of ethanol and then we have the molality. They wanna solve for this one right here. Okay, so I'm gonna move this one over first. So that means you just subtract it. All right, you cannot combine the boiling point of sugar and the boiling point of ethanol. K is a constant, all right? What's happening between that K and that M? Multiplication, so I'm just gonna divide by my constant of ethanol, constant amount. So boiling point of sugar minus the boiling point of ethanol over the constant that I have of ethanol is going to be the molality. So they're gonna use here a bunch of big words that was a simple a literal equation, much simpler than the example four or whatever it was that we did, okay? So just because you have a word problem, pay attention to the, the formula that they give you and what they want you to solve for. Don't be thrown off by the scientific terms or whatever they're using in it. Go, get to the basics. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to solve for M. It's a really simple equation to solve for M. Subtract and divide is all I had to do, all right?